Hey, what's happening? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Goran and today I'm going to talk about potassium. Lately, I've been paying attention on my mushrooms and my zoanthids. And oh man, they look so good. Ever since I started dosing potassium nitrate, they just want to explode. If you're a mushroom and zoanthid lover, pay attention to your potassium. If you never tested potassium and you love those type of corals, start testing it and start dosing it. In my tank, I had problems with low phosphates and low nitrate, which I talked about in one of my other videos if you want to go check it out. But since my nitrate was low, I started dosing potassium nitrate. And since I started dosing potassium nitrate, I got the potassium kit just in case to see where I'm at so I don't overdose it. So that's where my potassium game started. Just because of my low nitrate, but since I purchased potassium nitrate, I decided to get a potassium test kit so I can measure my potassium as well. And before all this, my zoanthids didn't look good. All the heads are so small, they were just all tiny, not as colorful, not as puffy. Now I actually see how zoanthids look when they're happy, when my potassium is a little bit higher. So what I usually do when I test my potassium is right after I do my water change. I don't test it all the time. I do my water change once a month and right after I do my water change, I just wait a few hours and that's when I test my potassium my iodine and my magnesium. Usually I keep all those a little bit higher than it is in my salt mix. Usually right after I do my water change, they're around 420, 430, since my salt mix tests around 420, 410. Usually your safe range for potassium is around 400 to 450. When I hit 450, I try not to go over that. A few folks out there that keep their potassium very, very high. I'm not sure why they're shooting for so high of a numbers, and I've seen them talking as well about zoanthids and mushrooms and some of the corals just looking better. But with my potassium being a 440, 450, I see that same result. I just don't see a reason why go higher. Potassium supposedly enhances blue coloration in certain type of corals. That's not something that I noticed, but I just wanted to put it out there. Potassium promotes algae growth as well, which can be a positive or negative thing for you, of course. If you're trying to grow any type of macroalgae in your tank, definitely it's going to help. But negative thing it is that you have to clean your glass more often. So basically, that's why I have reasons to test for my potassium. I'm making sure that it's not too high or my salt mix doesn't have any or it has too high of a number in it. So that's why I test it right after my water change and making sure that I'm good to go as far as salt mix go and to make sure that I have enough in the water so my corals are happy. I do use a salifer test kit and it's pretty easy to use. It's not that hard to test. If you decide to test for potassium, if you do it the same way I do it, just once a month, it's honestly not a big deal. But should you do it or not? Maybe not. You just trust your salt mix and you're doing your water changes often. You probably don't need to deal with it at all. But trust me, if you're a zoanthid or a mushroom lover, you want to try doing it. My mushrooms and zoanthids look way, 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 way better. They'll grow faster. They just look more healthier. The small patches of mushrooms that I had, now they're huge. Every single bounce that I have, they look amazing. If you're really into mushrooms and zoanthids, me saying for a third, fourth time right now, start testing your potassium. All right. If you guys have any comments, drop them down below. Find me on Facebook and Instagram as well. Like and subscribe and uh, see you guys in the next video. All right, peace.